we are back on the moon again. However, it seems like our main ride, NASA, is having a bit of trouble with their vehicle. Fortunately, SpaceX has come up with a backup plan. They call it the Gray Dragon. What is that? How will it help us reach the moon? I will tell you right away. Before we get to how to get Dragon to the moon, we need to know why we have to do that. It's not that NASA doesn't have its own vehicle to do that. They do. In fact, it could be considered a pretty decent one. The Space Launch System is one of the most powerful rockets NASA has ever made, and the Orion spacecraft, although not flawless, has proven its potential to carry out its lunar mission in Artemis 1. However, the biggest problem these systems are facing is they are bleeding not just time, but money. Lots of them. The development of the Space Launch System, SLS, with Boeing as the primary contractor, cost $23.8 billion from its inception in 2011 to the successful completion of its first Artemis test flight in late 2022. And since the SLS is a non-reusable rocket, each time it launches, well, there goes $2 billion. The project's high cost is so bad that, at one point, Boeing notified its SLS employees that the company was preparing to cut up to 400 jobs from the program due to revisions to the Artemis program and cost expectations. Following daily discussions with NASA, the company was able to retain half of the affected jobs. We are in a very bad situation, so a more economical solution must be proposed immediately. One possible approach is to cancel the whole thing and use SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft and Falcon launch system instead. Now, the idea of using the Crew Dragon spacecraft instead of Orion is not new, at least among experts. One of them is Dr. Zerbin, who has come up with a plan to use SpaceX's Crew Dragon for the Artemis mission. If you are familiar with Mars Society, then you have definitely heard this name. Robert Zubrin is the president of Pioneer Astronautics, an aerospace research and development company based in Lakewood, Colorado. He is also the founder and president of the Mars Society, a global organization committed to advancing the exploration and settlement of Mars through both public and private initiatives. Previously, Zubrin served as a staff engineer at Lockheed Martin Astronautics in Denver. He holds a master's degree in aeronautics and a PhD in nuclear engineering from the University of Washington. With a resume like that, when he comes up with a bold plan of using Crew Dragon as an alternative for Orion, the guy knows what's he talking about. At the time, the Gray Dragon plan, which Zerbin referred to as the color of the moon, could get people to the moon as soon as 2024. Here is how the plan goes. To get the Gray Dragon to the moon, we'll need a combination of two launch systems, the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, and of course, the Dragon spacecraft. The reason is that the Falcon 9 doesn't have enough thrust to take Dragon to the moon, and the Falcon Heavy itself isn't crew rated yet. First, Dragon will be launched into low Earth orbit on a Falcon 9 rocket. This is the altitude at which most artificial objects in outer space are located and it is also where the Dragon spacecraft often performs its missions. In LEO, the crew will perform systems checks on Dragon, while a Falcon Heavy will be launched into space as well. After stage separation, the Falcon Heavy's lower stage will return to Earth, while the upper stage will stay in LEO to rendezvous with the Dragon spacecraft. Because it does not carry any payload, this upper stage would still contain plenty of propellants. According to Dr. Zerbin, this is enough for the upper stage to bring the Dragon spacecraft to send the Dragon on Translunar Injection TLI, and potentially Lunar Orbit Capture LOC, and Trans-Earth Injection TEI, as well. Zerbin offers two options for his plan. The first option involves launching a Falcon Heavy without a payload, placing a 10-ton dry stage and 65 tons of propellant into low Earth orbit. After performing a rendezvous and docking with the Gray Dragon, the combined vehicle has a dry mass of 19.5 tons with 65 tons of propellant. 
with the Falcon Heavy's exhaust velocity of 3.41 km per second. This results in a total Delta V capability of 5.0 km per second. After using 3.1 km per second for translunar injection, 1.9 km per second remains, which is sufficient for two DV maneuvers of 0.95 km per second each, one for lunar orbit capture and another for trans-Earth injection, allowing the spacecraft to achieve a lowish lunar orbit and return to Earth. The second option requires the help of a small propulsion stage, or SPS. There was something like that in the original Artemis plan. They called it the Space Launch System Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage. Basically, the task of these systems is to provide in-space propulsion after the solid rocket boosters and core stage are jettisoned. Okay, back to the plan. The SPS consists of 7.9 tons of LOX slash CH4 propellant and 1.5 tons of dry mass, bringing its total mass to 9.4 tons. When combined with the Dragon spacecraft, the total mass increases to 18.9 tons. With a mass ratio of 1.717, the SPS provides a total Delta V capability of 2.0 km per second, enabling lunar orbit capture and trans-Earth injection for both outbound and return trips from low lunar orbit. The Falcon Heavy upper stage reaches low Earth orbit with a 10-ton dry mass, 9.4 tons of SPS mass, and 55.6 tons of propellant. After rendezvousing and docking with the Dragon spacecraft, the combined mass of the assembled spacecraft will be 84.5 tons with 55.6 tons of propellant in the Falcon Heavy upper stage, available for translunar injection. This plan was written by Dr. Zerbin in the form of a memo and sent to NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine and Scott Pace, Executive Secretary of the National Space Council, on June 30, 2020. Zerbin calls it the Artemis 8 mission, named after Apollo 8 the first human spaceflight to reach the moon. Although this seems like a well-thought-out plan, one thing to note is that in this plan, the Dragon spacecraft is designed for deep space missions, while the current Crew Dragon is a spacecraft optimized for low Earth orbit. So how can SpaceX make the Dragon spacecraft fit to do deep space missions? Well, turns out they don't have to do much. If you remember before Starship, it was a variant of the Dragon spacecraft that they intended to send to Mars. SpaceX called it the Red Dragon Project. This might be the key to upgrading Dragon for the Moon mission. Developed between 2011 and 2017, it proposed using an uncrewed, modified SpaceX Dragon 2 for cost-effective Mars lander missions. Launched aboard Falcon Heavy rockets, the primary goal of the initial Red Dragon mission was to test technologies and techniques for entering the Martian atmosphere with equipment that could be used by a human crew in the future. These Mars missions were intended as technology demonstrators for the larger SpaceX Mars colonization plan, which was unveiled in September 2016. Originally conceived in 2016-2011 as a potential NASA discovery mission for launch, as early as 2022, the program evolved after it did not receive funding during the 2013-2015 Discovery Mission Program cycle. However, in July 2017, Elon Musk revealed that development would be halted, with resources redirected to the Starship program instead. One of the Red Dragon's advanced technologies that the current Crew Dragon spacecraft still inherits is its robust heat shield. In January 2006, NASA's Stardust capsule, equipped with a standard PICA heat shield, set the record for the fastest re-entry speed of a spacecraft into Earth's atmosphere, reaching 12.9 km per second. The Dragon spacecraft utilizes PICA-X, an enhanced version of the original PICA heat shield, which has been tested and proven to exceed the performance capabilities of the heat shield used by Stardust. The heat shield isn't the only thing that stands out about Red Dragon. In the Red Dragon study, 
the spacecraft was designed to make a direct entry into Mars' atmosphere, descending to the surface without a parachute system. Instead, it would rely on retro propulsion for a precision landing, with Super Draco rocket engines providing the necessary thrust. The study's findings indicate that, at the upper limits of its capabilities, a Red Dragon spacecraft could land approximately two metric tons of useful payload on Mars, twice the mass of any previous payload ever landed on the Red Planet. The study group concluded that a minimally modified Dragon spacecraft could successfully execute an all-propulsive entry, descent, and landing on Mars without violating the laws of physics. In addition, they noted that the Red Dragon capsule offers several times the volume of the Viking-era entry vehicle from the 1970s. The point is something that can land on Mars, can also land on the Moon. Even though they've optimized Dragon for LEO, they could absolutely bring back earlier upgrades to help Crew Dragon get to the Moon. Of course, modifying Dragon will require both time and investment, while existing research will help streamline the process. The modified spacecraft will still need to undergo rigorous testing to ensure it meets safety standards. So, are there any solutions? Actually, there is one. We can use a very important element of the Artemis mission, which is the Starship Human Landing System, or HLS. The idea is to launch the Crew Dragon to LEO and rely on the HLS to do the rest of the work. Here is the plan. The Starship HLS will be launched to low Earth orbit, where it will be refueled by tankers, an essential step as outlined by the Artemis program. Next, the Crew Dragon spacecraft will be sent to LEO, where it will rendezvous with Starship HLS. The crew will transfer from Crew Dragon to Starship HLS, which will then carry them directly to the lunar surface to carry out their mission. Afterward, Starship HLS will lift off from the Moon and return to LEO, where Crew Dragon will be waiting for the crew's return. The crew will then transfer back into Crew Dragon for a safe journey back to Earth, while Starship HLS remains in orbit, ready to be refueled and prepared for the next lunar mission. With this plan, Dragon will only have to operate within its sweet spot. It eliminates any need for any improvements to the spacecraft. Since Dragon has been proven through numerous previous successes, as soon as Starship HLS is ready, we can send humans back to the moon. So, which plans do you prefer? Let me know in the comment below. As of February 2025, the Orion spacecraft has cost $21.5 billion, or $26.3 billion, when adjusted for inflation to 2022. With this money, NASA could acquire multiple Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon Heavy rockets for their launches. Still, it appears NASA has no intention of abandoning its SLS and Orion projects. Now, as fans with no direct influence, all we can do is hope that NASA will justify its decision. And if they decide to use alternative measures, they need to quickly come up with a plan. We must return to the moon. Over 50 years of waiting is enough.